I'd like to call the City of Wheat Ridge Planning Commission for April 15, 2018 to order. Can I get a roll call for members, please? Emery Dorsey? Yes. Daniel Larson? Here. Janet Leo? Here. Scott Ohm? Here. Richard Peterson? Here. Ellen Bucknam, Vivian Voss, and Amanda Weaver are absent tonight. The next order on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. Is there a motion to approve the order of the agenda? I move to uh, approve the uh, order of the agenda. Is there a second? Second. Are there any additions or corrections to the agenda? Call for a vote. Motion carried five to zero. Is there a motion to approve the order of the minutes for March 15, 2018? I, I motion we approve the minutes from the meeting on March 15, 2018. March 15, 2018. Is there a second? Yes. Go ahead. I was going to say if the new members want to abstain on this one, that would be fine. We just need a majority of the others. Can I get a second? I wish to. Uh, we need a second before the motion goes through. Right. I wish to make a uh, a change on the. Uh, we need to have a second before we. Oh, okay. Then I'll second it. Okay. Are there any additions or corrections to the order of the minutes? I wish to make a correction uh, on page ten, uh, item C. Case number is wrong. It should be Z O A. Dash 18 dash 01. Any discussion? Okay, call for a vote and just, yeah, just to rem remind the newest commissioners to abstain. Thank you. Motion carried three to zero with two abstaining. Okay, we will now move to the Public forum, this is the time for any person to speak on any subject not appearing on tonight's agenda. We have two cases tonight, so anything that's not on the... Nobody has signed up. Okay, I will close the public forum. I open the public hearing for case number WZ-18-07, an application filed by the Francesca Crisp for approval of a zone change from agriculture one to commercial one to mixed use neighborhood for property located at 1111-221 West 44th Avenue and ask for the staff report. And just before we start that, um, I'd also like to start by swearing in anybody in this room that who plans to speak with the applicant staff and anyone from the public who plans to testify or comment please stand raise your right hand do you swear to tell the truth in the matter as you know it thank you now i ask for the staff report Alrighty. <clears throat> good evening uh, for the record zach wallace mendez uh, planner with the wheat ridge community development department is this is this on I can't tell. Yes, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, tonight I will be presenting case number WZ1807, request for approval of a zone change from agricultural one and commercial one to mixed use neighborhood uh, for property located at 11221 West 44th Avenue. I would like to enter into the public record the contents of the case file, the zoning ordinance, the comprehensive plan, and this digital presentation. The property is located within the city of Wheat Ridge. All appropriate notification and posting requirements have been met, and therefore Planning Commission does have jurisdiction to hear the case. So noted. Alrighty. What we have up on the screen is a 2016 aerial. Uh, the subject property is outlined in red. 
located on the north side of 44th Avenue, just west of Pearson Street. Um, directly to the north is the city's public works maintenance shop. Um, and then to the southwest over here, we have the entrance to Prospect, Prospect Park, and directly to the west is the Baugh House. Um, the parcel is approximately 2.25 acres in size. Um, obviously, it's regularly shaped uh, rectangle. And um, staff has noted that there's no irregularities as far as shape or topography. This is the same 2016 aerial with the zoning, um, the city's zoning overlaid on top of that. Um, as you can see, the, the property has a split zoning. Um, it, it's all one parcel, but half of it is zoned agricultural one, and half of it is zoned commercial one. Um, and the property, the I guess on the ground realities of the property are, are very much divided along those lines. On the commercial side of the property, there's a, an old tavern um, that I believe is currently vacant with a large parking lot for the tavern behind it. And then on the west side of the property, which is zoned agriculturally, there's four single family houses, um, all of which were built in the early 1900s. I actually think the first was built in 1869 or so. Um, and then surrounding uh, zone districts in the area, um, to the north we have uh, the blue public facilities. We don't see that too often, but that's for like the city maintenance shop. Um, it's a PF zone district. Um, to the east along 44th Avenue is very uh, commercial, commercial one uh, designation. To the northeast uh, is some R2, R3, and planned residential development. So. Um, kind of a, a myriad of our residential zone districts. To the west, we have Agricultural One. Um, of course, the Baugh House is zoned Agricultural One, and then a few uh, residential properties. And to the south, we have a uh, Prospect Park, which is zoned Agricultural One, and then a, a planned residential community, um, the Parkside Patio Homes. Uh, <clears throat> this is a photo of the property looking northwest from 44th Avenue. You can see the tavern, um, obviously, here in the foreground. Um, but then in the background, you can also see the home, one of the homes on the property, um, and the, uh, the large parking lot to the rear of the property here. And this is looking northeast from 44th Avenue. Um, now in the foreground is one of the homes. There's two single family homes directly behind this um, that are out of view. And then the fourth single family home is, is seen here behind those two trucks. And then in the background, you can of course see the tavern to the east. And just one more view um, looking north from the south side of 44th Avenue, the tavern to the east and the single family um, home with three others behind it hidden um, to the west. Excuse me. Um, dis despite these power lines and the sh kind of shrubbery uh, that divides the parcel. I, I just want to reiterate again that it is one property um, that was divided. I, I elaborated in your staff report, it was it was likely the original zoning on the property was split um, due to the age of the structures. It's probably just what Jefferson County kind of overlaid on top of this when, when they um, started zoning land in the county. Um, and then we just inherited it and there haven't been many renovations to the property since, so it's just stayed that way. So <clears throat> we'll go over really quick the existing and proposed zone districts. Um, the commercial one zone district is a, a, a wide variety, or it allows for a wide variety of commercial, um, commercial retail office um, uses. The existing commercial can obviously remain, um, and it can expand. It's a, an allowed use on that property. It cannot, however, convert to residential, so no residential can go on the east side of that property. The agricultural, the existing residential is actually considered legally non-conforming. Um, agricultural zoned properties allow one single family house on them. Um, these homes obviously predate the city of Wheat Ridge and zoning in general, uh, so they're considered legally non-conforming. They can remain and they can do improvements and expansions to those homes, but they cannot add any more residential units um, and they cannot add any commercial uses, uh, with the exception of a home occupation within those homes, which is, is pretty limited. The mixed-use neighborhood zone district, which the applicant has proposed to rezone the property to, um, would kind of wipe away that split zoning and allow for a, a mix of commercial, residential, or a mix of the two um, across the entire property. 
So the table here uh, got a little bit smaller than what we're typically used to seeing just because there's three zone districts at play. Um, but there's just a little comparison here. So there's similar architectural standards that apply to both the commercial one zone district and the mixed use neighborhood zone district. Um, the mixed use neighborhood zone district has its own design and development criteria um, in terms of architecture transparency, um, but they're very similar to the architectural and site design manual, which governs the C1 zone district on this property. Um, for the A1 portion, there are no architectural standards for that portion um, or for any agriculturally zoned land in, in the city. Um, build two set Build tube requirements, setbacks, lot coverage, landscape requirements are, are relatively similar between the commercial one and the mixed use neighborhood. There's obviously some variation, but they're generally um, similar. Um, obviously, under the agricultural zone district, they're all very different than what's proposed under the mixed use neighborhood zone district. It's because the agricultural zone district um, is, we inherited it from Jefferson County and it, it establishes land for quasi-rural living and agricultural uses. So obviously a, a mixed use zone district is, is going to be very different from that. Uh, one thing that I do wanna add um, that is the same if the property is rezoned is the height limits. So currently on the C1 portion of the property, um, a, a commercial building could go up to 50 feet tall. Uh, that remains the same under the mixed use neighborhood zoning. And for a residential structure in the A1 zone district, the maximum height is 35 feet, and that remains the same for any residential structure in the MUN zone district. So the heights actually stay the same. Everything else uh, would be modified slightly um, if it was rezoned. There was a neighborhood meeting held in early February. Five neighbors were in attendance. Um, there were some questions raised about parking requirements, landscaping requirements, and then buffering from the adjacent single family homes. Um, all of those questions were answered and a lot of folks um, actually stated during the meeting that their concerns were um, at least addressed, maybe not calmed, but addressed. Um, and during our referral agency, or our referral comment period to outside agencies, there were no major concerns presented by any of the utility districts. Um, I also wanna mention, keep in mind that if this zone change is approved and redevelopment is proposed for the property, um, there would be a site plan review for that redevelopment at what point, at which point um, city staff would review compliance with the architectural standards, setbacks, buffering, and then at that point utility districts would, would have a good idea of what the proposal is and be able to comment um, more in depth about you know, what the developer would have to do to uh, the water lines or the sewer lines and able to, in order to serve the development. So now we'll jump to our comprehensive plan. Uh, as the commissioners are aware, we use several criteria to evaluate zone change requests. Primary among them is consistency with the comprehensive plan. This image is an excerpt from the plan and the subject property um, is generally where the blue star is located there. Um, the pink line indicates a neighborhood commercial corridor, so that's 44th Avenue. Um, and this property sits right on that commercial corridor. The corridor designation envisions a broad mix of activities, including commercial and residential uses. Um, because the MUN zone district does allow a mix of uses, it is appropriate uh, district between, or I'm sorry, my notes are wrong here. <laughs> um, it's an appropriate district for this location um, along the commercial corridor. And it, it is consistent with the policies and goals of the comprehensive plan, sorry. Also relevant, um, for this area is the Fruitdale sub-area plan. Um, this was adopted in 2007, so two years before our comprehensive plan, but has, has not been updated. Um, again, the, the blue star is generally where the property is located. Um, let's see here. So the sub-area plan indicates this area of 44th Avenue to be a mixed-use area. So you can see mixed-use areas. It's kind of calling out this whole little corridor here. And, oops including the subject property um, as a mixed use area and encourages reinvestment, redevelopment, um, and specifically for this area, um, calls for mixed use projects that help create a neighborhood center. So in addition to being in conformance with the comprehensive plan, staff finds that the requested zone change is consistent with the Fruitdale sub area plan as well. So with that, staff has concluded that the request does meet the zone change criteria. 
the change is requested or supported by both the comprehensive plan and the Fruitdale sub area plan. The MUN zone district is compatible with surrounding area, which already includes a mix of uses. And the zone change will not have an adverse impact on the public welfare in the area. So for those reasons, staff recommends approval. That concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, the applicant is also here today, but she's feeling a little under the weather, so I don't know if she wants to speak, but if you have questions, um, she may be able to answer them. But she is here. Thank you. We'll start with uh, Commissioner Peterson. Do you have any questions for staff? I, <clears throat> actually, I do. Um, it's more of an explanation than anything else. I, I noticed that in the, the planning documents, um, section 26112, private zoning, um, under applicability, it says, this, it says that you can change the a parcel of land from one zone district classification to another zone district classification. Um, that suggests to me that you can go from one type to another single type. This, is, this has two zoning categories on that single parcel of land. That's, that, I, I, my reading of it says that that's good for parcels of one acre or smaller. Now my question is what happens when there are two zoning districts on one piece of property and there's two and a quarter acres? I mean, does it require two zoning changes or just one? Um, n no, this is all uh, one single parcel with split zoning, and believe it or not, we see that a lot in the city. Um, not sure, you know, uh, Zach kind of alluded to that we inherited zoning from Jefferson County, and so it's quite frequent we see this. Um, if a property is over an acre in size, a zone change is to be to a plan, some sort of planned unit district, unless they're going to a mixed use. So um, we would advertise uh, the, um, the publication for the land use cases having the two zonings and then going to the one. Okay, but, but only if you go to a mixed use. Mixed use or planned, some sort of planned development, which is a whole different right, right, ball of wax. Right, right, right. Okay, okay, thank you. Any other questions? Commissioner Peterson? Any other questions? No, that's okay. it. Commissioner Rosen? Commissioner Larson? No, no questions at this time. Commissioner Leo? No Commissioner Weaver? I was just curious. Um, Will this require a plan, like a planned use development would once the zone has been changed? Yeah, so um, if any redevelopment is proposed on the property after the zoning's in place, they'll have to go through a site plan approval. That's what I was, okay, thank you. Uh, I have no questions, thank you. Let's see if the, um, if the applicant um, wants to come forward, they can, uh, if they feel the staff has presented and they're fine with that um that's fine too i would see if any do any of the commissioners have questions for the applicant that they need to come forward if the it's up to the applicant then if they want to make a presentation or if they're okay with staff okay we will now move on to the citizens forum. Are there any citizens that have signed up to speak? Are there any cit citizens in the audience that wish to speak? And there's nobody on the list. Okay. So. And there's no one in the audience that wishes to speak. Okay. I will close the citizens forum. At this time, I would entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. The, my motion is um, I move to recommend approval of case number WZ-18-07, a request for approval of a zone change from Agriculture 1, A1, A-1, and Commercial 1, C1, to mixed-use neighborhood MUN for the property located at 11221 West 44th Avenue for the following reasons. 
The proposed zone change will promote the public health and safety and welfare of the community and does not result in an adverse effect on the surrounding area. Utility infrastructure adequately, adequately services the property. The proposed zone change is consistent with the goals and objectives of the city's comprehensive plan and consistent with the character of 44th Avenue. Number four, the zone change will provide additional opportunity for reinvestment in the area. And number five, the criteria used to evaluate a zone change support the request. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion by the commissioners? Okay, I will ask for, ask for a vote. Motion carries five to zero. Thank you. Sorry, six to zero. Okay, I will now open the public hearing for case number WZ-18-06, an application filed by Lewis Bielich for approval of a zone change from residential two to mixed use neighborhood for property located at 4650 Wadsworth Boulevard. And I'd like to start uh, uh, anybody who plans uh, to speak with applicant staff and anyone from the public who plans to testify or comment, please stand, raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth in this matter as you know it? Thank you, and I ask for the staff report. Uh, good evening, everyone. I am Scott Cutler. I'm a planner with the City of Wheat Ridge Community Development Department. Um, we're here tonight to discuss case number WZ1806, which is a request for approval of a zone change from residential two to mixed use neighborhood at 4650 Wadsworth Boulevard. I'd like to enter into the public record the contents of the case file, the zoning ordinance, the comprehensive plan, and this digital presentation properties within the city of Wheat Ridge and all appropriate notification and posting requirements have been met. So therefore the planning commission has jurisdiction to hear the case. So noted. All right, uh, so the subject property is outlined here in red on the screen. Um, the property is located on the east side of Wadsworth Boulevard between 46th and 48th avenues. And the property is approximately a third of an acre in size. The subject property is currently zoned residential two, which allows for single family homes and duplexes. And a, cur a duplex currently exists on the lot. Uh, you can see that the Wadsworth corridor is primarily commercial in nature. And the properties to the north and south, as well as other properties in the nearby vicinity, are zoned restricted commercial, uh, which allows for offices and limited retail. The property across the street is zoned mixed use neighborhood and the other one across the street is zoned residential three, which could allow for multifamily residential. Um, the properties further to the east and to the west of Wadsworth are all zoned R2 um, as the uses kind of transition into more residential neighborhoods. So the property um, you can see looking across Wadsworth Boulevard uh, contains a duplex that was built in 1951. Um, there's a horseshoe driveway in front uh, with a little planter box there um, and a gate on the right side of the house to access a rear yard and parking area. And this is a view looking east across Wadsworth. Um, and then the properties to the left and right on this image are the ones zoned uh, restricted commercial and they currently contain commercial uses. It's another view of the property looking southeast. Um, the property is the white truck parked in front of it for your reference. And then here's another view. Um, the property is actually not in this photo, but I wanted to take this uh, looking south on Wadsworth. Um, and you can see the increasingly commercial uses as you head south onto Wadsworth. Um, and then this is a view um, actually from Google Street View showing the entire property. Um, it shows the front and side yard, the neighboring commercial properties, and then that gate on the side. So looking at the development standards, uh, the table on the screen compares the existing and proposed standards that would apply if the property were to be redeveloped in the future. Um, in terms of permitted uses, the MUN zone allows commercial uses, whereas the R2 zone does not. Um, in terms of residential, the MUN is more flexible because it could allow um, potentially more residential units, whereas the R2 zone only allows single family and duplexes. 
Um, the MUN zone district actually could allow up to six units on this property or four new ones if the duplex were to remain. Um, and to put this all into context, the commercial zones on Wadsworth, including the neighboring commercial zones, uh, C1 and RC, both allow buildings commercial up to 50 feet in height. Um, and then on the mixed use zone, um, if it was a residential building, it would have to be 35 feet, as Zach mentioned earlier, and then 50 if it was purely a commercial building. Um, and that is similar to the zones next to this property already. Um, the design standards in MUN are stricter than R2 because R2 does not have design standards uh, for duplexes or single family homes. Whereas in MUN, any new construction would have to meet those mixed use architectural standards. Um, and then uh, the MUN also regulates uh, setbacks and landscaping a little bit differently. There would actually be a larger rear setback if a three-story building was built on the property. Um, and then landscaping is slightly different as well. But overall, the development standards are fairly similar in terms of the setbacks on Wadsworth and then the side and front setbacks. Um, so we had a neighborhood meeting on the uh, February 13th. Um, we had six attendees from the neighborhood, and in that time, uh, we received one letter of support uh, from the neighborhood. Uh, that resident was not at the meeting, um, but they sent us a letter uh, supporting the zone change. Out on referral, uh, we did not receive any concerns from outside agencies, um, and then we had a 15-day public hearing noticing for this. We did not get any phone calls or letters about the zone change as well. Um, before the hearing, the property was posted, um, and yeah, we did not receive anything. So if there is redevelopment proposed on this property in the future, um, there would be a site plan similar to what Zach mentioned that would be subject to further staff review, fire department review, things like that. So taking a look at the comprehensive plan, uh, we do use those criteria to evaluate zone change requests, which includes consistency with the comprehensive plan. Uh, and staff believes that the proposed MUN zoning, sorry, is consistent with the policies and goals in the comp plan. The comprehensive plan for this area indicates Wadsworth as a primary commercial corridor, uh, which encourages a broad mix of activities. And the comprehensive plan specifically notes the importance of improving outdated and underutilized properties on Wadsworth Boulevard. The zone change request enables further investment in the property and aligns with the city's goals for a mix of uses on this corridor. Ultimately, staff has concluded that the request meets the zone change criteria, and a more extensive analysis was included in your staff report, but I'll summarize some of my conclusions. Based on the character and land patterns on Wadsworth, the MUN zone district is more appropriate than R2 in terms of both allowed land uses and intensity. And for that reason, the zone change should not have an adverse effect on the surrounding area. Based on the small size of the property, many of the more intensive uses permitted by MUN are unrealistic for the property, such as large apartments or major commercial uses or office buildings, limiting the overall impact of potential redevelopment. Staff finds that a zone change to mixed use neighborhood is supported by the comprehensive plan and specifically the vision the city has for Wadsworth Boulevard. The MUN zoning is compatible with their surrounding area, which already includes a mix of residential and commercial. And uh, for those reasons, staff recommends approval of the request. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Commissioner Peterson. <clears throat> I, I just have one question, and again, it's kind of a clarification for me. <laughs> Probably no one else. Um, in section 261102, um, it talks about uh, mixed use commercial districts as well as mixed use neighborhood districts. Given that Wadsworth is a fairly busy arterial street that is commercial, heavily commercial, I'm, uh, I'm wondering, do you just have the discretion to say whether it's MUC or MUN? And it struck me that MUC might, that it seems to fit better. Sure, so further south on the Wadsworth Corridor is a, a large swath that is zoned MUC that's very commercial in nature. Um, I think given the, the surrounding land uses in this area, especially the neighboring residential directly to the east, um, the MUN is a little bit lower intensity and provides a little bit more um, 
buffering, if you will, from those single family neighborhoods um, that just aren't present, um, at least you know, further south on the property. Obviously there's residential neighborhoods, but not directly next to those commercial corridors. Um, For example, building heights would be potentially higher in the MUC zone district, and this actually would require a lower maximum height. But, but so it's about, it's about context. Wadsworth surely is a candidate for MUC, um, but we felt MUN is a little bit more um, context sensitive. Um, the property on the other side of Wadsworth at the corner of 47th and Wadsworth um, is also zoned MUN, um, given the surrounding context of, of a transition from Wadsworth Boulevard into a very residential, low density residential neighborhood. It's, it's bordered on either side by com commercial zones though, right? Sure, yeah, and the MUN zone district does allow similar commercial uses to both, um, or to the RC zone district, um, whereas the MUC is a little bit more intensive than that as well. So again, another reason why it just fits so, a little bit better. So it's context, so you do kind of have a say, I mean, you, you, you can, it's a coin toss in a way. Um, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a loaded coin toss because of context. Sure, yep. Okay, yep. I, I was just wondering about, about how that decision is made because reading the words, it sounds like it should go one way. Sure. Okay, yep. thank you. Commissioner Dorsey? I have no questions. Commissioner Larson? Uh, no questions. Commissioner Leo? No questions. Commissioner Weaver? I have no questions. Thank you. Uh, would the applicant like to make a presentation? Uh, are you okay with the staff's presentation? I'm not. Okay. Uh, do the uh, before just before uh, I dismiss you. The do the commissioners have any questions for the applicant? Okay. I will open up the citizens forum. Are there any citizens that have signed up to speak? No one signed up to speak. Are there any uh, people in the audience that wish to come forward and speak? Okay, please st step forward and uh, state your name and address for the record. My name is Dan Grant and I live at 4645 Webster Street, which is the property directly behind this property we're speaking about. G-R-A-N-T, Grant. Greedy is the first thing I think of. Um, I've lived in my property for 17 years. I was born here in Wheat Ridge, Lutheran Hospital, second property I've owned. Um, my concerns are, from what I'm gathering, this is going to be a fourplex. Uh, no one's mentioned this, but a fourplex, three bedroom. This is what we gathered from the previous meeting. So. If I'm doing my math, that's at least 12 to 16 additional people in that small area, which would mean, I'm not sure, they spoke earlier about the type of um, residents they want to live there. I mentioned this is going to be something like Section 8 housing, which that has a purpose. I'm not against that. Um, they said, no, it won't be Section 8. They're trying to attract young professionals. So that would mean more than likely a, two parents, and then they have two extra rooms. So what I'm getting at is that's around 16 to 20 additional people on that small property. Now everyone probably is gonna have one car or two. So maybe that's additional eight vehicles on that small plot of property. And probably everyone has a dog or two. That's another four to six dogs on that small property. Right now, the there's a home there which they're going to leave it's my understanding with a basement but the access is in the backyard and there's two people living there now with a dog so that would be another two people the home is rented to one individual i believe or excuse me yeah rented to one individual now but it is a single family home you could have three or four more people living in that so we're talking possibly 20 or more people in that small area. And I think that's, it's, it's, out, it's insane to me. And, um, I'm not a public speaker or anything, so excuse me if I'm fumbling around, but that, that's really how I feel. In addition, 
when they're trying to um, have residents there that are professionals, young professionals is what they spoke about, the property is going to be sitting on the um, north side facing south, which faces the massage parlor that's there now, the Chinese massage parlor, and um, I think there's a counting place there too. I just can't see it drawing in young professionals to live in the backyard of an existing property going forward. Of course, it's going to be on, I have a privacy fence there, a wooden fence. Of course, my privacy is going to be impacted. People are going to, it's a two-story building, they'll definitely be able to look into my property. Um, so those are some of the concerns I have. Also, not to harp on this, but I know code has been called on this property numerous times for various issues, and it's these owners that own this property. So I'm wondering going forward, you know, is thing, are things going to be maintained? I'd rather see them maintain the property now. There's weeds that were over eight foot tall, and you can check this, the code's been called. Currently there's trees overgrown. Um, there was issues with dogs previously. All these things you could check on. Um, and I'm not sure, I guess the city of Wheat Ridge, well, well one thing that you guys brought up was, I guess, commercial versus residential, and there's commercial on both sides. And it is a big difference to me, I guess, because now you're wanting to move in a, a fourplex with all these people and cars and dogs and so on and so forth. Um, I guess you, you couldn't do that if it's a commercial zone, is that correct? We're going to wait until, okay. I'd like to wait until we mm -hmm. get the, all the public testimony before right. we answer. That's, that's fine, thank you. Um, and I guess the property can be, according to what I see here, this huge building can be 35 foot tall and 10 foot from my back fence, if I was reading this correct. I just think it's, um, again, it's greedy. I don't notice, I don't know if those gentlemen live in Wheat Ridge. I've lived here, I was born here. I don't know if that's what Wheat Ridge wants. I guess they'll get some tax money from this property, but I just think it's uh, way out of line and it's too much for this small property. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other people in the audience that wish to come forward? Please state your name and address. reside also behind these properties at 4635 Webster Street and I think it's too much growth where you want a corridor for I-70 in the future in the accessibility of that heavy artery road I think there's just other properties to pick from to build this kind of stuff than right on Wadsworth and it should be considered to remain totally commercial or Leave it alone so we can do something about the entrance ramp to I-70 eventually. And that's what I'm thinking. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members in the audience that wish to come forward? I will now close the Citizens Forum. And let's uh, go through some of these questions. There are questions, um, and, and just to um, I guess ask a, ask a question. Uh, tonight we're not talking about the specific uses. We were only talking about the, the rezoning, correct? So we don't have a specific plan in place of, if you could elaborate on that. Correct. Yeah, that's, that's correct. This is just the zone change. Okay. Um, so the, the first question, there's questions about, um, and that kind of goes back to the, my, my first question about the zoning changes that it was, uh, Concerns about number of people, dogs, um, uh, maybe the type of housing. Uh, those would uh, probably be either, a, I'm guessing, a code compliant um, or addressed in the, uh, if they uh, redid the, the uh, change, once the it's rezoned, if they changed the building, um, then they would have to update those types of things? Uh, 
Yeah, they would have to, so it's similar to Zach's presentation. Um, any redevelopment would have to undergo a site plan review. So that would be when city staff would look at setbacks and, and architectural requirements, landscaping, bring the property basically into compliance. So any new development would have to be in compliance with the new mixed use code. Okay. And, and they would look at um, the, pri the privacy buffering um, of appropriate. Yes. And just to clarify, um, if there were to be a three story building, um, it actually would increase the amount of setback that is currently required. Mm -hmm. So currently it's a 10 foot required setback to the fence. Um, if it was successfully rezoned to mixed use neighborhood, um, if there was a three story building, it would actually have to be a 15 foot minimum setback. Um, and you know, it could be even larger than that. Okay. Thank you. And I believe that set setback would also need to be landscaped to add. Okay. Um, are there any, uh, questions, uh, that, that you feel I haven't asked or as far as comments, I know we talked about housing, people, dogs, buffering, code enforcement, enforcement issues, um, building heights. Um, there's comments about it re remaining commercial. I will take no further testimony. I've closed the citizens forum, sir. Um, so one thing that I did want to add is, is about Wadsworth Boulevard. Um, yes. Since one of the, the speakers spoke about Wadsworth being an artery and, and leading to I-70. Um, so I'm not sure if, it, if you all are probably familiar that the city is currently studying with CDOT um, a widening project for Wadsworth Boulevard. The applicants are aware of the current plans um, and we brought the folks who are working on that project into their, their pre-application meetings. So they're aware of, of you know, kind of our conceptual plan for Wadsworth. We're, we're still working through some of those, those plans, but um, they are aware that Wadsworth will be widened and, you know, the impacts to their property. Um, so that, I guess that doesn't address her question per se, but just that we, we are thinking about it and the applicants are aware of, of that, that potential change um, in the very near future. Okay. Thank you. At this point, I would uh, entertain a motion. I make a motion. Uh, recommend approval of case number WZ-18-06. A request for approval of a zone change from residential to R2 to mixed use neighborhood MUN for the property located at 4650 Wadsworth Building uh, Boulevard for the following reasons. Number one, proposed zone change will promote the public health and safety or, or welfare of the community and does not result in a, an adverse effect on the surrounding area. Utility and infrastructure adequately services the property. Number three, proposed zone change is consistent with the goals and objectives of the city's comprehensive plan and consistent with the character of Wadsworth Boulevard. Four, the zone change will provide additional opportunity for reinvestment in the area. And five, the criteria used to evaluate the zone change supports the request. Is there a second? Any discussion? I did push the wrong button. Sorry about that, Debbie. <laughs> um, is there any way that, and this might be a question, not discussion, so I can table this if it's not, that staff can just address the total amount of potential people in a building. I realize we're not talking about a site plan, but that it, may I ask a question of staff in um, this discussion? I, I think so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm I was just hoping that one of you could maybe speak to the, in the site plan pro process is, uh, number of units and people per units addressed 
and how it's addressed. Is that and typically, I, I know too that parking comes into play. And parking, often, exactly. That's often a limiter. Yeah, so in the MUN zone district, it's a maximum of, of 21 dwelling units per acre. Mm -hmm. um, so we will obviously assess that during the site plan review process and make sure the number of units being proposed for a property does not exceed that. Um, they also, during the site plan review, we would um, ensure that there's adequate parking on the property based on what the code requires for the use. Um, and then in terms of the number of people within a unit, um, the code does have a definition of, of family. Um, so it, it, it gets a little tricky, um, not only for Wheat Ridge, but for every city, um, because it, it, it could potentially be an unlimited number of people if you're all related or by blood marriage or adoption, I think are the three categories. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, I mean, there is that limitation within the code. Um, these, it, one dwelling unit is for one family um, per the definition in the code. Thank you. I, I just, I appreciate you all stating that. I, I do support this uh, simply because I think uh, that in, in the other cases that we've seen regarding MUN, there has been uh, a, a good balance considering buffering as well as considering parking and total amount of people in these kinds of developments. So I will be supportive of this. Any other discussion? Okay, call for vote. Oh, okay, go ahead, sorry. Motion carries six to zero. Thank you. We will now move on to old business. Is there any old business? No. Is there any new business? There is. Um, so we have two new commissioners um, currently seated, um, Mr. Larson and Mr. Peterson. Um, since this is our first meeting and we have a couple people absent, um, we're going to postpone voting for officers um, until probably the next regularly scheduled meeting. Um, so for uh, chair and vice chair. Um, another update, Lauren had her baby. I'm sure you're all aware that she was very pregnant the last time she was here and she was very ready. <laughs> so she did have the baby um, last Saturday. Yep. So she'll be out for a little bit and we'll see her back summertime. And then uh, we have nothing scheduled for the April 19th meeting. So no meeting next and two Thursdays. Um, but we might have something after that, so that's it. And just just to add one more thing, now that we've got a full board again, um, we would be looking at some training at some point with the city attorney. So we try to do that every, you know, so often, so. Are we gonna have that in the, in this uh, chambers? Or are we gonna, I know sometimes, okay. Oh, okay. Sometimes in the past we've had it uh, near near your offices in that conference room. I would say probably the conference room was a little more informal, um, and I've I've kept um, I've kept uh, Mr. Dahl's uh, some of his PDFs and notes, and um, I still have that in case you need that. Okay. We don't have a date we're looking at. We're actually very busy with cases, and we we like to do the training when there's more of a lull, even though we don't have a meeting next in two weeks. But um, that's kind of not on our radar screen at this point. But we will be looking at trying to do something. Okay. So, thanks. Any other discussions? Is there a motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second that. Call for a vote. Motion carries six to zero. And Thank you. Welcome to our two new members. Yay!